Okay, before anyone comments on my critique saying that I'm bullying and stuff like that, I would recommend you read the disclaimer. I'll keep it up for a few seconds just for you guys to read it all. Got it now? Good. Now let's go on to the critique now. Man, after all the stuff this year, I have to take a nice break. So, I'm gonna have a Christmas party! And no, this isn't the 100 sub special. That will be coming at the end of the year. So yeah, I have to make it to my big gift. So follow me. Well, now that I'm here, let's see if anyone is ready. Okay, someone's a little late to the party, but that's no issue. So let's open it. What are you doing? Okay, what did I miss? Ah! ah, shit. Guess I have to go to a scientist to fix this blunder. Well, looks like since Bracket Neutron 37 got done with his commentary, we had no more problems and got more science stuff done. Can we go on holiday break now? Yeah, I miss my family. Well, yes. After we're done cleaning up, we can finally go back to our homes like a boy with white hair who lives in a house. Hey man, isn't it a little rude to break in here when we're done? Well, sorry to interrupt you, but my friends died due to a maxi pillar, and it's still going on. Look outside if you want to see more of it. Okay. But if you are lying... Julian Jaff the fan movie characters Max the Mink Monkey voice actor Julian Mirero, the old one, at M-A-X-T-H-E-M-I-N-K, Max the Mink Monkey old voice Max the Mink Monkey new... Ah! Well, I guess you were right. We have to stop this human from destroying this good city. Well, what should I do then? Well, I think doing critique would be the best option to stop her. Okay, gotta go now. See you when it's done. Wait, take these ancient scrolls to critique the beast. It also has info on her sips who want her coochie as well. Well, thanks. Gotta go. Start this now before any more damage happens. Bye. Bye. Man, I may be paid a lot, but it is not enough for the situations I get thrusted into. Me too. I just hope everyone is safe. Shut it, you two. Let's go. If we clean this when Spacey gets back, we will get more break time. Cool, man. man. I am a virgin who eats toil and paper. Well, I wasn't expecting this to occur, especially on such a good holiday day. And oh! Sup guys, Spacey here. And today, on this magical Christmas day, I got a user who's a very odd case. Even more so than John's antics, albeit less agloggy. Enter Maxi Gold. And oh boy, this is one hell of a user with much drama from both fans and detractors fighting on both sides. Yeah, we take a trip back to the package freedom for this user. And oh boy, this is one hell of an obsessed user. Not much is known about her pre-Twitter days, except for the fact that she is obsessed with Ed's world. Oh, she already calls herself a gold, like Ed Gold. And the fact that she ha has her own studio, with much quotes around that as well, known as Jaff Productions. I think that's how you pronounce that. That's a little confusing to pronounce, so I don't know. But that stuff isn't important for today, so... Let's jump further till she gets obsessed with the package fandom, particularly with Zuri and his brief little series, who also seems to have a ton of creepy and odd fan art of the strange variety. Yeah, he has one of those fandoms. So after a few creepy drawings, the package fandom got tired of her, and of course she got the backlash she deserved. But then her simps came in, and yeah, it became a mess from there. Let me just say to our white knights and simps, however, that 
I do not intend to harass her in any way she perform, especially since she does have autism, although they are kind of hypocritical in terms of the autism thing, considering that they're speaking to people with a spectrum as well, but let's get to that later. That's all I have to say on their part. So yeah, let's get on to Maxi and all of her problems, since oh boy, this is something that's very, very strange. Well then, I guess we start here. This is Maxi's current-ish, I think, channel, made around almost a year ago. I wonder what kind of content will be made here. Hmm. Let's see how that's what I started doing on the computer, the internet. Finally, I find out how to work on Jillian Yaa. What are you doing? No. Oh. Well, there's a lot to take in here. So let's start with the fact that she's apparently an animator, which is something that's still rather common on YouTube, albeit it's no longer focused on the lore slash series type videos, which Maxie does, instead of focusing on memes, which she also does to extend. Well, if you count random 13 to 15 second clips, memes. Let's start with the biggest problem in her videos, the fact she doesn't edit these videos. That means there are sections that are very jarring, that go on forever, and the classic tactic of pointing the camera at the screen, which is an ancient technique which looks ugly as fuck. Besides, you should move on with the times, Maxi. Move along. Seriously, using Windows Movie Maker and putting images looks a million times better. Sure, it's not the most professional, but it looks way, way, way better. I would also say using Audacity to record, would also mean good audio, since I also assume your laptop has a mic, which those tend to be at least decent in quality. That's at least the bare minimum I think you should get across to be at least a decent animator, which would also mean people actually paying attention to your plots. And speaking of those plots, they are barely existent. Knowing that the lore type videos don't really offer too much, and the memes, they barely count as memes, there's not too much character and story to pay attention to. I know this is just one of those fantasy-like things, but this isn't even a good fantasy-like thing. This is just nonsense. And sometimes nonsense can work, but your works don't aim to be surreal, which really is why they don't work. So yeah, nothing really else to mention on the story side, since I think they really lack any sort of story in the first place. But I also mentioned there's some gross subject matter in some of these videos. I won't show them for obvious reasons, but yeah, this subject matter breaks the community guidelines on YouTube, and I'm shocked her channel haven't been taken down yet. Oh wait, I say channel? I meant to say channels, but let's get to that later. And I think it's best to keep these fetishes private into yourself, since honestly, this is very uncomfortable when people discover you, and someone's definitely gonna call you out for all this strange stuff. Like me, for example. I mean, well, who else whacks their gag to some of this shit? Ugh. Well, that's all I have to say about her YouTube and... Uh, wait. How many alts are there? Yeah, this is what makes Maxi distant from other alt cows. The number of alts she has. From what I know of, there's over 50 alts to hers. Over 5 is already extreme already, but having this many makes you look like a stalker. Especially considering that you use multiple channels to subscribe to the same person. Yeah, she stalks people a lot too. But let's get to that when we talk about her Twitter. A lot of these channels also have zero videos, or basically have the same subject matter as the other channel we looked at. Which makes me wonder why she makes them in the first place. It just makes your channels look so confusing and clogs up server space on YouTube. But at least one of the alts did contain this masterpiece. <laughs> Oh, this is some Chris Chan level quality. But at least Chris managed to match up with the beat slightly. But within this sea of alts, I did find an all new channel for Maxi. Made around March of this year. See, guys, I tricked you. I knew this was the current channel. Okay, maybe they will make a new channel later on, but who the fuck knows of Maxi? She's unpredictable. This channel, for the most part, contains the exact same stuff as we've seen in the previous channel, only with more stalking of users, some Vion stuff, and ew, pedo animator. Ugh. 
But I did find the Christmas video somewhat engaging though, as it gives us a little bit of insight into her life. Yeah, mostly it's the chicken nuggy legs. <laughs> but there's also some hints at abuse, knowing how sad she is in the video, and how unwilling she is to open her presents. Really unchristmas like if I do say so myself. Of course, this could just be normal behavior for Maxie. I don't know her personal life anyway, and I have no interest to outside of these videos giving us hints. So yeah, that's all I have to say on Maxie's YouTube. So far, it's just your typical bizarre YouTube channel, give or take the extreme number of alts and somewhat very fetishy subject matter. But when we get to otter territories, when we look at Maxie's stalking and her other stuff. <laughs> So this is Maxi's Twitter, made in 2017, and it's unlike any other bad Twitter account out there. While most of the worst just call anything racist, like pigtails for example, Maxi is more special than that. Special Ed. <laughs> okay, tasteless humor aside, I would basically describe Maxi's Twitter account as a combination of those weird DeviantArt fetish accounts, those Indian spam users, and those kids who were on Miiverse back in the day when the Wii U was at its height. Like, no kidding, it's really that similar to those people. But let's look at Maxie's tweet to see what she's all about. So we're already off to a strange start. Yeah, Maxie does this featuring insert random user here thing a lot, mostly with people she stalks in her White Knights, along with other random people who just happen to be caught in Maxie's field. It seriously makes her look like a spam account, rather than a real account, along with it just being pure out annoying. Well, now we get to her obsessing with users in paper dolls. Yeah, Maxie has been known to stalk users for a long ass time, by either tagging them, stealing their artwork, and turning them into paper plushies. Sometimes they're normal, but most of them tend to be either fetish based, or naked. This obsession goes really far as well, with the best example being this video, called Otherverse OST, Joy for Laughter. And there is this tweet as well, which shows off a bunch of paper plushies of small, medium, and large varieties. Do you see all those paper plushies in the background of both these examples? Yeah, those plushies are space wasting and show how creepy she is. I could maybe accept one or two of these, but knowing how many she has, this is pretty space wasting and is a fire hazard waiting to happen. Not wishing any death upon her, but it's just inevitable that some of these plushies are going to catch on fire and burn down the house. These plushies also radiate a very big stalker energy in her, which is something that she's going to do a lot. And I do mean a lot, a lot. Like this thing. Welcome to this edition of Maxi not taking the fucking hint. Why would you convulsively do stuff with your belly button after watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? You were just acting creepy to Yurashika, you creepy ass woman. Ah, for fuck's sake. Don't show off your creepy fetishes like that to people who don't like it. This isn't the only example of her odd fetishes on Twitter, however. There are also these abominations, which I had to censor because, oh god, why the fuck would I show this shit on YouTube? Some of this stuff even involves Happy Tree Friends of all things. Yeah, remember the creepy side of the Happy Tree Friends fandom? Hopefully I didn't make anyone remember a PTSD moments. Look at how many snacks there are here. I guess her mom is force feeding her, or not taking action on her diet. Kinda sad. Yeah, she not only sims for the main people of the package fandom, but also their targets, like the Pidu who inflates young kids. Also good luck at getting people like Package, Maniac, Bry, Daniel, and Zerdy to work on the same project, or hell, even worse, get in the same room, as people like Nugget the Balloon Girl, Pink Kitty, and Zero Power the Next Before. I wish you really good fucking luck on that shit. Uh, what did I just read? This is just pure word salad. Finally, I'll show off two interesting things I found about Maxie and her strange adventures. First off is this interesting picture, which features not only a massive big plushie of something, which honestly is very, very space wasting, but also look at that shower and rug. That probably proves she lives in a shithole. Very gross. And for my second and final example, I get to show you this odd masterpiece. Yeah. She apparently brings this shit to special ed class. I'm kind of terrified at the thought of them being brought into a special ed class. Ugh. 
I could go on forever about this, but since I have to keep the pace of the show, let's continue onward to the alternate account she has. First off being... Millie Star Bear. Some random 16 year old bear who is an amputee. I am getting very major schizophrenia vibes from this. So this account is just basically a account that does the same stuff as Maxi's main account, but also with a dash of roleplay between the two accounts. Yeah, I'm getting way too many schizophrenic vibes from this to really feel comfortable, so let's move on to the third and final account. That final account being Jaff Tunes, which has almost nothing on it, shockingly enough. Hell, I sometimes even doubt that this is even Maxi, but since this is as accurate as Maxi gets with the speech style, I honestly like to believe that this is real. So yeah, that's all of Maxi's accounts that I know of. So now that I'm done with talking about Maxi's Twitter, I might end this video off here since this is just your very typical user group like Creepo. But no, there's actually something extra about her that makes her a little bit more special. Yeah, like the alternate accounts were already enough to separate her. So now let's get into the users who defend this heathen from criticism and other such activities. Now, White Nights of users I covered is nothing new to me. I had to deal with Percy and Sailor Moon fan 2002, a John the TV show fan White Knight, who copy and pasted his comment on my critique and Bracken Neutron 37's DA Special 3. I also had to deal with Skomiz the Raccoon Spider, who tried to attack me and other critics Jack Mugen earned, and failed so hard at reasoning it was laughable. But Maxi is an odd case, as unlike my previous two targets, who had just one person white knighting them, Maxi has an entire army of white knights ready to attack anyone who is a meanie weenie to Maxi with horseshit logic most of the time. Sure, they made some okayish points sometimes, like blocking Maxi for example, which I did and she hasn't mentioned me at all, so that's good. But even then, I'm not exactly noteworthy enough for her standard, so yeah. Even then, I don't necessarily have enough reliable results to see if blocking really does work. It also doesn't solve the problem with the paper plushies as well, but yeah. But that's all I can give them credit for. The rest of the points are the usual shit you see with someone who wants the white a user they really enjoy. For example, they really like to parrot this she is disabled point a lot. Like, what the fuck's that logic? No matter how many times you say she is disabled, it still doesn't undo the fact that she's still acting like a creeper. Do you know you're talking to people who are on the spectrum who don't do this shit, right? That includes me as well if you decide to respond to me. I know that she's also lower on the spectrum than people like me and the other people in the package fanbase, which I know you're definitely gonna pull that bullshit out of your ass, but I've met people on the same level as Maxi on the spectrum, and they know when to stop, and knowing what's right and wrong, just by people saying, no, don't do that. Speaking of which, if you think she can't do it on her own, why don't you just tell her that's wrong? Maxi could really learn from you considering that they trust you. I also find it funny that when Peter asked the same question, you didn't answer that at all, kinda shows that you're not confident about your arguments. Seriously, this gross art is what happens when there are no consequences with people for their bad behavior, and it saddens me that people think neurodivergent people can't learn right and wrong, or be held accountable for their actions. Sure, some lower people on the spectrum don't know how to control all that well, but teaching them is way better than letting them loose and doing bad stuff. I also find it very ironic that they think the mini weeny word retard is ableist, but then they say autistic people can't control themselves, which ironically enough is ableist. Hell, I don't exactly have a high view of people who call things ableist, since it's often used as a word to describe things they don't like. Also, I'll say this again. I know Maxi is lower on the spectrum, and she can't control it all too well. But Maxi has been aware of this, and has numerous times said stuff about that. So she isn't completely brain dead, and if enough learning has been done to her, she can possibly learn from her mistakes and stop stalking them. But no, instead of helping out the autistic person, we'll just let them roam free because they're all retards who don't know how to control themselves. Uh, I know how to raise autistic people well. Duh. But despite them parroting that point the most, that isn't the only piece of logic they have. They also say, lol, ignore it, when it comes to art or posts that make the detractors uncomfortable. 
even they're saying this to Jack Mugen of all people. Which, if Jack isn't right in that situation, you definitely fucked up as a person. Like, you really, really fucked up. Of course, Jack Mugen isn't 100% in the right either, as unlike his previous account, he didn't block Maxi, which, honestly, I'm shocked he didn't decide to block Maxi, but, eh, that's Jack Mugen logic for you. And fucking G. It's almost like people have personal boundaries for themselves and their OCs and feel uncomfortable when people break those boundaries, especially if the users are underage. Hey, look at this fantasy art I made of your OC. I even made an uncomfortable post about you. How do you feel? Um, that's uncomfortable as hell. And I said that my OCs are safe for work only, so. What? Da he l just ignoring you piece of poo. Seriously, do we need to repeat hashtag respect legally tiggly again? I also feel like blocking them would also be a band-aid to the bigger issue of uncomfortable art and paper plushies. Like she goes after people who block her and people who don't even have Twitters, so I don't exactly feel like that she would be the most respectful of the boundaries of blocking, you know? These are the two points that they have sipping her, and they have to construe and pair these same two points over and over and over again, and calling the maxi detractors mini weenies whenever they dare criticize their lord and savior, ignoring any other points the detractors may have. Not even answering the big ones, like why they don't help her out. Like, some of the answers would be very useful to get a little bit more of a perspective on both you and Maxi. Look, I don't even care too much about her kinks too much. If she kept them private or done the fetish art with her own OCs only and with more mature filters, I would be completely fine with it. But when she involves other people into it, of course they're gonna get mad at her. And I am to an extent as well since some of these people are my friends, like Maniac of Sinai for example. Seriously, how do these people even defend some of the images she makes? Like, some of these are very inexcusable. But that led to me asking a question. What are their motives for sipping Maxi? What are they gaining by doing this? So I have to deep dive to find out. And this might just be a shitty conspiracy theory, so take a few of these words with a grain of salt. So yeah, let's go a little bit deeper and find out more of the psychological reasons they're doing this shit. So Maxi apparently was on the web since 2014, with many YouTube channels being made over time. She also only lives with her mom as well. Her dad is not in the picture. And if he were still in the picture, Maxi would not have social media at all, or have very restrictive access to the internet. Which would honestly solve a lot of the problems with Maxi stalking and being creepy towards users. So I'll give some more props to her dad for at the very least trying to parent, even if he can't visit Maxi all that often. I assume he only visits around the holidays and such. Even if the pictures on his DeviantArt apparently reek of some sort of disease that plagues the autism community, but that's a whole nother subject for another day. Maxi eventually got an infamous reputation in the YouTube and Twitter communities of Ed's World for her stalking behavior and stuff like that. It was to the point where someone ranted on her and thus made her fade to obscurity, for now at least. Then she later on got obsessed with Package and Zerdy and the other people in that fandom, so she did many creepy stuff involving them. Which would start Maxie's next phase in her creepy domination. Around the same time, some shady members who are part of the Tordana animation group came into the picture, like Dalek and Clay Kid, for example. They made Ed's World knockoffs along with their other animations of mediocre quality, at least in my opinion. These people who were in the group were also shady users in their own right, as well as doing many questionable things, mostly harassing animation workers in the industry. Tordana was like a cult in a way. At least that's what evidence I got suggests. Of course this might be outdated information, but this isn't really a good look so far. Of course knowing their somewhat shady history, their view counts were for the most part pretty shit to kinda mediocre and were on decline pretty fast, or just flatlining. So they had to get new fans, but instead of becoming new good users and actually improve somewhat, they instead decided to rope in some of the lower intelligence into their cult, and who better to do that than Maxi, someone who was already kind of infamous in the fandom, and was also a fan of Ed's world, so 
I mean, she could not tell the difference between the knockoffs and the originals. I also assume Maxie joined the cult around 2018 as well, considering that some of Maxie's videos feature their animations, and they go back all the way to around September or so 2018, so that's my best guess as the when she joined. I also will note that they also attacked Maniac for making a rant on Maxie as well on March 12, 2020. So yeah, she has been a part of this cult for quite a while from what I can tell. So from what I could conclude from all the information I gathered is that they decided to sim towards Maxie because they needed more views on their series. Which if this is true, which I'm more than likely believing it is, this is absolutely pitiful of a reason to rope someone like Maxi into their cult. Very fucking disgusting. That is all I have to say on this cult, since I don't have enough details to give a full scoop. The only other information I have is that the Tordana Twitter account and the other users involved like to like some very strange pictures on Twitter. Very uncomfortable in my opinion. If anyone has any more details on these people, please DM me on Twitter or make a comment below, because this rabbit hole must go somewhat deeper at the very least, or I could have just been a stupid take and may have been cancelled in the future because I said something dumb and I'll disown later on. But I'm more leaning towards this being true than it not being true based on what I have so far. So yeah, better to end this off now before the White Knights throw their little pissy temper tantrums in the comments section saying that I'm mad or something like that. So let's get to the conclusion! Well, well, what is there to say about Maxie that hasn't been said about other people in a similar field to her? Well, let's just say that she makes unprofessional videos with very little editing and makes odd fetish stuff with users that don't want to be involved with it including stalking them to the point where they have to block her. Which, even knowing how low she is on the spectrum, is kind of unacceptable. Seriously, stop with those creepy videos that break the terms of service of YouTube fully. Ugh. And improve those safer work animations by actually editing your videos. It's easier than you may think, and it will drastically improve your animations by a lot. But even then, I might just be talking to a brick wall here, well, might as well make an attempt rather than to not do it at all. Now onto the White Knight slash Simps, and this is all I have to say towards them. When you pick a lost cause, you really commit! <laughs> Where do they make dreamers like you? GET LOST! Okay, but in all seriousness, if you want to look good with Maxi, don't defend her fetishes with those bullshit excuses for pedophilia, as it makes you look ableist towards autistic people who know what the consequences are, and can control themselves well. I also feel like you should teach her what's right and wrong with her personal restraint, since she trusts you, and since you want to simp for your little angel, you might as well help him out. Also, pretty please answer the question about why are you not helping her? Thanks in advance if you decide to answer. Finally, you guys are feeding into her delusion so fucking hard. Even if you're not doing this for your own personal gain, which honestly, I think you just are doing it for your personal gain and it just try and deny it, this is still crappy and shitty as all hell. Seriously, an asshole move. I also think the package fam tends to feed into the delusion a tiny bit as well, but I don't want to get into that right now. I'll just get into that later, in the next episode, so yeah. Hell, Maxie's dad does better parenting than these white knights. Even Maxie's mom does very, very slightly better parenting than these white knights. Honestly, pretty pathetic in my opinion. So yeah, that's all I have to say towards these people. So now I have to stop this Maxie pillar with this epic get before. So, bye! Well, looks like I'm finally done. Yahoo! Gotta show this off to the science team now. So here is your MP4 you want, Mr. Scientist. Goody, now I have to send it via the radio waves to the maxi pillar so it will disappear. So the device is ready, we have to push the big button now. So let's get Spacey to do it since he's a nice guy. Okay. Five. Four. Three. 
Who won? Zero is the deuteragonist of the Mega Man X series, the main protagonist of the Mega Man Zero series, and also an important supporting character in the Mega Man ZX series as the biometal model Z. That was easy. Amazing. This city is saved for now. As a bonus, your avatars have also been revived outside, so you should check that out. Sweet! Well, looks like our job here is done. Time for a holiday break. Yay. Yay. Well, time to go now. My wisdom needs a break. Okay, all of you are here. Let's see the magic of Christmas with these gifts now. Epic. So, what magical Christmas lesson did we learn today? Well, nothing long. Well, before I go, I bear with this magical Christmas message for you all to read. Since, honestly, this year was very fun to make content with. I'm glad that more people managed to see my content, and that I actually managed to get some decent views on these videos. This has been a very revolutionary year for me, not only socially, but also internet-wise, and I hope the same reigns true for 2021 as well. So yeah, hopefully everything will be fine, and see you guys in 2021, or at least I do my year retrospective and a little bit of a special Q&A-like deal, so yeah, now really bye. <laughs>